We're going instead of. Can we turn on Zoom? But the Zoom itself is approved by the Okay. Yeah. So who's controlling Zoom? Anybody? Okay. So I just, yeah. just so I understand, if somebody comes on to Zoom in half an hour, they will or will not be able to hear us. They'll be able to hear yeah. us. We won't be able to hear them. Hear Christina. We'll try. Yeah. To see if anybody comes on. So if somebody comes on, Christina can also um, yeah, text sure. them through Zoom and say, you know, if you want to yeah. speak, let me know or something yeah. like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that works. Yeah. Is there anybody on right now, Christina? Because we have three public hearings first. Okay. 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 So I think we can set, get started with the pledge and then go. Let's start with the pledge and then go to the public hearings, correct? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <laughs> Trustee Fritchie? Present. Trustee White? Present. Trustee Casada? Present. Deputy Mayor Lopez? Present. And Mayor Levin? Present. All right. Public hearings. A. Proposed public hearing in the for the local law of repealing Chapter 162. We have no one in the audience right now. So, is there anyone in the virtual audience that would, wishes to speak? on public hearing A. Please raise your virtual hand. No? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Any comments from the board? Sue? All in favor? Aye. 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 Hold on one second. Nine eleven. Thank you. Wait, are we doing something in the water park? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can you get something? No, but we usually have. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying you should yeah, get an email from somebody. Okay. What have we done in the past? Oh, it doesn't always Should fall on a Wednesday. Yeah. Everything okay? Christina, can we pause the meeting for a moment, please? Can you come down here for a moment, please? You can't. Why can't she come down? I don't think she heard it. Just for the record, we had some technical difficulties. You probably lost us for what I think was about eight, nine minutes. Now we're on Zoom. GoTV is not um, working tonight. So we are being, uh, the rule is that we have to record our meeting. So we're recording it on Zoom. Those of you on Zoom. Uh, we're back on. Thanks for your patience. Okay, Sue. Okay, uh, public hearing number B. Proposed law 2024, a, a, a local law amending chapter 88. Is there anyone on our, in our virtual audience that would like to speak on, on B? Please raise your virtual hand. No one. No, no one. All right. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So move. Any comments from the board? This was a lot of this was discussed numerous times. Um, Sue. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Uh, proposed local uh, C. Um, public hearing C is proposed local law 2024, a local law amending chapter 57. Is there anyone in our virtual world that would like to comment on that? No. All right. Do I have a motion to close that public hearing? Formal. Second. Any comment from the board? <clears throat> so. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. 
Mayors and trustee reports. Closing the public announcements. Meeting. So now we're going into our meeting. Yeah. Mayors and trustees announcement. Anybody have anything? No? So um, I just want to say that every once in a while, there's a little bit of sad community news. Um, a member of many organizations, um, Alice Jocelyn, who sits on our current board of the Youth Advisory Bureau, her husband, Peter Jocelyn, a longtime resident, uh, Peter passed away a couple of days ago. Um, so just wanted to say that um, we are all saddened uh, by that news. We wish all of the Jocelyn's, um, you know, our condolences, and we wish that uh, Peter's name be held in memory. And um, I think there is that Shiva today. I don't know if the rest of it, there were some public announcements. Um, in case you know the Jocelyn's, I'm sure Alice would appreciate a uh, call, etc. So that is for that news. As far as other items, just be aware that our next meeting is September 11th. Um, is the next time the board is meeting together, which is why tonight we will have a relatively long agenda um, to go through uh, many topics. So we're going to get started. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, administrative reports, Village Manager Karen Dettori. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Good evening, everyone. Uh, last night, um, we had a lot of families come out for the Austin Summer School Jam featuring Parrot Beach, a Jimmy Buffett cover band, and an array of food trucks and refreshments and fun and games for everybody. And somebody, I believe, found the lost shaker of salt. Our rec department really <laughs> hit it out of the park uh, once again with, with a great summer event and you know, many, many events that they do throughout the year, primarily in the summer, events, concerts, uh, tons of things for families. They really do an outstanding job of providing so many great activities that appeal to all members of our community and children of all ages. So shout out to them and to everybody who is out there um, dancing to the tunes of Jimmy Buffett. Um, also have an update on our Indian Brook uh, water treatment uh, plant. So right now, village staff at the water treatment plant finished installing our new chemical feed systems uh, for the new lead and copper uh, testing mandates. And these systems will put online the um, will be put online in the beginning of October, but will be ahead of the game in terms of being able to meet all new uh, requirements for lead and copper sampling um, and um, this will all change in the county as of 2025, but we will be ready for this. Um, and that is being incorporated into the old system. So as you know, as we start building the new water treatment plant, the old system is obviously still operational, but all of these things will be encompassed in the new um, plant once it, once it is completed. Um, and the general contractor for the Indian Brook water, water treatment plant is uh, right now 70% complete with the sewer site work at the treatment plant. And um, once that work is complete, they'll start the um, call underground work. Um, the village of Austin also will be busy paving throughout the rest of the fall. Um, work should start um, shortly after Labor Day on Cedar Lane from Highland Avenue to Stormingtown Road. Uh, Audubon Drive, uh, the full length, and Van Wick Street, the full length. Last Thursday, Maddie Zahach, Joe Agustinelli, and Greg Gross and I attended a NICOM seminar on code enforcement hosted by the village of Portchester. There was a lot of inf interesting information, uh, some that pertain to uh, things we're doing here, like the rental registry. Uh, it was a good conversation, and we were able to bring back some helpful information as well as uh, with hopes to continue ongoing conversations with villages, the village of Porchester and other villages who are, are grappling with some of the same challenges we are with regard to code enforcement um, and uh, housing issues. Uh, camp wrapped up last week. Um, we had over 600 children in our uh, summer camp program, which is again, beating our last year record. So a growing program that provides a lot of great activity over the summer months for Austin's youth. And uh, the Youth Bureau Summer Employment Program also wrapped up last week. Um, 
And we had over 65 uh, youth participating in that, almost doubling the number of kids who participated in internships and work opportunities throughout the village of Austin, including uh, right here at 16 Croton and at the operations center where we had kids working on public outreach, uh, messaging, uh, all kinds of projects, including some laser fish scanning, I'm sure. Um, we also had kids working at the library and, and, a, and a variety of different places where they really got to hand, hands-on experience um, and new opportunities. And we look forward to seeing them again next summer. And uh, we're also uh, on Monday, August 26th, 26, we are planning our soft launch of Project Mover. So on that day, you will see some e-bikes around the village and some of our officers have agreed to help us with that launch and they will be demonstrating those bikes and the safe way to ride them. Make sure. the date again? Uh, August 26th, Monday. I know it's in my calendar. So. Yeah, so um, again, this is just a short launch on a project, a pilot project uh, to incorporate other modes of transportation, in this case, e-bikes, and, and give people access to them. But we want to make sure it's done correctly and that we mitigate any any uh, issues in terms of safe driving and or safe riding, rather. And uh, we have a successful rollout. So we want to thank the chief and OBD for assisting with that, assisting us with that in advance. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Corporation Council, Stuart Kahan. Thank you, Sue. Good evening, folks. Uh, as we get ready to turn into September, uh, Corporation Council's office is looking at all the contracts that are coming due at the end of the year, see which ones need to be renewed, which ones are subject to a request for proposal, uh, which ones will be extended and which ones will not be extended. Uh, so we're, we're working on that, plus all different insurance requirements. Uh, we're also currently working on the contract with uh, DCAK MSA, which was the uh, uh, architect that the uh, board approved last week to do the uh, architectural design work for the uh, community center uh, uh, renovation. Uh, that we had a uh, kickoff meeting yesterday with the folks from DCK MSA, and uh, we'll probably have a contract to, for them to look at within the next uh, week to two weeks. Uh, part of the contract that has to be put in there are, is language from the state contract uh, which deals with the DRI grants. There's certain language the state wants, so we have to put that in there. Uh, so we'll be working on that. Plus, as I said, all the other contracts and uh, uh, you know requests for proposals that'll be going out, uh, you know, hopefully soon. Thank you, folks. Thank you. If I could just, um, no. I know it's both you and the deputy mayor, but I should have announced this. Prac is having like a community <laughs> engagement meeting. There's a date for public it. public work session, Thursday, September twelfth. 7 p.m. Budar's Third uh, Theater, uh, Austin Public Library. Right. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, Chief. Chief. Uh, Please. Good evening. Um, unfortunately, as summer sort of winds down to an end here, um, the PD and the school district. Hopefully, the weather holds out for the uh, next block party on the 28th. Trying to get the kids geared up, getting ready to go back to school. Um, that school, that being that school opens on September 3rd, the day after uh, Labor Day. So with school reopening, that means children are walking to school, buses are back on the roads, the roads are more congested, the teachers commuting. So please, for everyone traveling the roads through Austin, please allow yourself more time to get to and from work in the morning and in the afternoon, because there will be more traffic as the buses are on the roads, there will be more children on the roads. So please... Um, be cognizant of that and allow yourself more time so we don't have any uh, undue accidents. So just a little bit of patience and pre-planning as, you know, the roads are always more congested, especially that first couple weeks of school. And as we have happened every year, parents, please be patient with the school buses dropping your children off. Uh, just because the buses might be a little bit late does not mean your children are missing. <laughs> Sometimes they always get on the wrong bus. Your best avenue to you know, vet that out is to contact the uh, the district office and uh, we can get in touch with the transportation uh, director and make sure that uh, your children are, they're usually brought back to the school. We'll make sure that that's all taken care of. So a little bit of patience and enjoy the rest of your summer. 
While we're discussing traffic as we go past Labor Day, so the commuters, are we seeing an increase to your knowledge of commuters or are you not going to know that till they reapply? Because um, it feels like there are more people going yeah, back. What, we have, Labor Day. Yeah, as of September 1, we're done with selling 2024 train station permits. And we have, even though the parking lots are not always full, uh, we have sold over 400 um, permits. So is that at a hundred percent? That's a hundred percent. Yeah. Is there a waiting list already, or not no, yet? Not yet. So you're at a hundred percent. Right. But we're so having a new year. system come in um, this fall, and um, so that we need to prep for that. And plus, we're at a comfortable place now. Um, but yeah, we've done. It's we do have all the the permits out there, and you know, as they people are happy that we aren't putting in the solar. People who love solar panels and they would have missed them in the, they'll miss them when in the winter, but you know, it didn't disrupt the uh, parking lot. So that was good too. Okay. So, you know, it's been about four years since we haven't had full commuter traffic yep. along with the school. It all happens in the same week. Right. The commuters are full speed. They're back and everybody's back in school. Right. So we have both of those uh, traffic issues. Yep. Thanks for the reminder. Okay. Okay. Organizational announcements. Announcements shall be event related only and shall be no minutes, no longer than two minutes in length. Is there anyone on virtual Zoom that would like to talk about it? Please raise your virtual hand. Okay, seeing no one, we'll move on to public comment on agenda items. Visitors shall be accorded a one four minute opportunity to address the board on any of the resolutions on the agenda. Is there anyone on the virtual, in the virtual world? that would like to address one of the items on the agenda. Okay. Uh, visitor recognition. Visitors are accorded a one three minute opportunity to address the board on issues not related to the agenda, but of relevance to the common good of the village. Again, seeing no one. Okay, moving on to the village board resolutions. Approval of minutes, August 7th, 2024. Resolved that the board of trustees of the village of Austin hereby approves the minutes of August 7th 2024 regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So move. We need a second. Second. On the comments from the board. So I have to okay. yeah. all in favor? Aye. Four Aye. plus Aye. one. I abstain. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes August 14th, 2024. Special special meeting. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Osling hereby approves the minutes of the August 14th special meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So, second. Comments from the board? Sue? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Approval of voucher, voucher detail. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Osling hereby approves the voucher detail report dated August 21st, 2024, in the amount of $4,673,400.78. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? Yeah, we have a capital project in there, and that's the uh, street sweeper. That is about three and a half million dollars, I want to say. So that's the big number that you guys have seen in there. And then plus all the miscellaneous stuff, but that's a big Great. chunk of the project. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Adoption. This is a roll call vote. Adoption of local law 9 to 2024. A local law amending chapter 91, whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin Village Board has been considering the adoption of a proposed local law 2024 entitled a local law amending chapter. Is that correct? Section 91-23 when it refers to 91-2024 everywhere else? Is that correct? No, no, it's a local law 24 and section so 91. So just 91 yeah, okay. Okay. I'll start again. Uh, whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin have been considering the adoption of a proposed local law 2024 entitled a local law amending chapter 91, section 91-23, building construction payment in of review costs and section 91-24, failure to pay review costs for the Village of Austin Code, and whereas a public hearing was conducted on August 7th, 2024, at 7.30 p.m. at the Birds Hall Vegan Police Court Facility, 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, and via Zoom platform, affording members of the public the opportunity to be heard, and whereas the public hearing was closed on August 7th, 2024, 
And whereas there is no impediments of approving the proposed local law now, therefore be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ossing hereby adopts Local Law 9-2024, a local law amending Chapter 91, Section 91-23, Building Construction pay Payment and of Review Costs, and Section 91-24, Failure to Pay the Review Costs, and be it further resolved, that local law number 8 20. Skip a page, did I? No. Really? no, no um, yeah, the pages are so thick. Um, uh, local law 8 2024 shall become effective immediately upon filing with the Secretary of State pursuant with municipal law rule. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the board? An amendment, Sue, at the very oh, end, the yeah. last paragraph yes. to change 8 to 8 2024 to 9 2024. The last result paragraph. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why I was flipping the page back and forth. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Trustee Casada moved, and who second? As amended. As amended. Thank you, sir. Um, one more vote, please. Okay. Roll call vote. <clears throat> Trustee Fritchie. Aye. Trustee White. Aye. Trustee Casada. Aye. Deputy Mayor Lopez. Aye. And Mayor Levin. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, adoption of local law 10 2024, a local law amending, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a local law amending chapter 247 towing for the Village of Austin Code. Again, this will be a roll call vote. Uh, whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin have been considering the adoption of a proposed local law 2024 entitled a local law amending chapter. 247 towing and of the village of Asting code and whereas the public hearing was conduct conducted on August 7th 2024 at 7 30 p.m at the Birdsall Fagan court facility uh, police court facility 8688 Spring Street Austin New York and via zoom platform affording members of the public the opportunity to be heard and whereas the public hearing was closed on August 7th 2024 now, whereas it is all there are no impediments to approving the proposed local law now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby adopts Local Law 10-2024, a local law amending Chapter 247 towing, and be it further resolved that the Local Law 10, I'm going to amend that, shall be, shall be effective upon filing with the Secretary of State pursuant with the Municipal Home Rule Law. Do I have a motion to approve the amended local law? So moved. As amended. Second. As amended. Okay, roll call vote. Um, Trustee Fitch Fritchie. Aye. Trustee Casada. Aye. Trustee White. Aye. Deputy Mayor Lopez. Aye. And Mayor Levin. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Up to F, then, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Notice of declaration to become an <laughs> agency of. I, are you so used to them coming right in order, right? Uh, Notice of declaration of to become lead agency for a proposed text amendment to chapter 270 zoning for the village of Austin code in a determination of environmental significance of a proposed action pursuant to the state environmental quality review act. Whereas the village of Austin board of trustees the board of trustees is considering the adoption of a proposed law 2024 a local law amending chapter 270 zoning by adding a new article uh, fit 17. Uh, Indian Brook Croton Gorge Intermunicipal Watershed Protection Overlay District, WPOD, and amending section 270 5, list of districts, and whereas pursuant with the section 270 59 of the proposed law was referring to the village's planning board was referred to the village's planning board for a report, and whereas pursuant with the general municipal law, the proposed law was referred to the Westchester County Planning Board. And whereas the village proposed law um, dash 224 may affect the environment, and whereas no other agencies other than the Board of Trustees is qualified as lead agency for the adoption of the proposed law eight uh, yeah, as amended. Uh, oh, yeah, 24. Yeah, 24. Um, and whereas CEQA Regulation 617.6 provides in part an earliest possible agency formulation of the action it proposes to undertake. It must do the following. Determine whether the action is subject to CEQA 
uh, make the preliminary classification as a type one or unlisted using the information available. And whereas it proposed law 2024 does not come within either of the listed type one or type two actions. And whereas full EAF parts one, two, and three were prepared by the village's planning consultant. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board of trustees of the village of Austin declares itself lead agency in the consideration of the adoption of proposed law 2024, adding a new article, <clears throat> excuse me, 17 Indian Brook Croton Gorge intermunicipal watershed overlay district to chapter 270 and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees at the lead agency issues a neg negative declaration to this proposed action, adoption of the proposed law 2024, adding a new Article 17 Indian Brook Croton, Croton Gorge Intermunicipal Watershed Protection Overlay District and revising the list of zoning districts. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Stuart, I just need a quick elevator speech about what all of this is about. So yes. that it just goes for those that are going to see this on the video. Whenever they we in. have previously discussed the Indian Brook Croton Gorge yep. overlay. It, uh, under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, the board has to declare itself as lead agency for this particular matter. It is what is called an unlisted action. It's neither type one nor type two, uh, and it will not have any sig environmental significance. So there is no need for a uh, environmental uh, uh, impact statement to be filed. And uh, this is needed so that you can then go and forward and pass the local law. Right. No, I, I mean, I know. Yeah. I'm just, you know, people look at these yeah, I was clarifying. sporadically, so yeah. I just wanted to be in context. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay. The next is the uh, local law. So this, again, will be a roll call vote. Adoption. Mm -hmm of local law 1124, 2024, excuse me. A local law amending chapter 270 zoning by adding a new article 17. Whereas the board of trustees of the village of Austin village board has been considering the adoption of local law 2024 entitled a local law amending chapter 270 zoning by adding a new article 17 Indian Brook Croton Gorge intermunicipal watershed protection overlay district and amending Section 270-5, list of districts for the Village of Austin Code, and whereas the Village Board on August 21st, 2024, adopted a negative declaration regarding the proposed amendments, and whereas the public hearing for the proposed local, local law was held on August 7th, 2024, and whereas the public hearing was closed on August 7th, 2024, mm -hmm. now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby adopts the new local law Number 11, it is 11, right? right. Okay, <laughs> 2024, I lost count. Um, and directs the said local law to be filed and distributed in accordance with the applicable law and be it further resolved that pursuant with New York Village Law Section 7-706 and, and five in parenthesis, the text of the local law shall be entered into the minutes of the village board and be it further resolved that the local law 11-2024 shall become in effect when they, upon filing with the Secretary of State pursuant with the Municipal Home Rule Law. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Any comments from the board? Again, a roll call vote. Trustee Fritchie. Aye. Trustee White. Aye. Trustee Casada. Aye. Uh, Deputy Mayor Lopez. Aye. And Mayor Levin. Aye. Thank you. Okay. A uh, call for a public hearing. Local law 2024, a local law amending chapter 92, building construction in, oh, 92, yep. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby calls a public hearing to take place at 7.30 p.m. on September 18th at the Bird Saul Fagan court facility, uh, Police Court Facility, 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, to consider a proposed law 2024 entitled a local law amending chapter 92 of the Village of Austin, and be it further resolved that the proposed law amends the affirmation chapter by deleting references to foundation permits and be it further resolved that the members of the public are invited to attend <clears throat> the public hearing in person at the above lo referred location and be it further resolved that those members of the public requiring mm -hmm. 
A reasonable accommodation to participate in the public hearing due to a person's disability shall be notify the Corporation Council no later than seven days before the public hearing at Cajon at villageofaustin.org uh, to afford the village significant time to provide a reasonable accommodation and be it further resolved that those members of the public who want to attend participate the public hearing remotely, access will be available via the Zoom platform and be it further resolved that comments regarding the proposed local law will be accepted by the Board of Trustees at BOT at villageofaustin.org. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Call for a public hearing. Proposed law 2024, local law amending chapter 250, vehicles and traffic for the Village of Austin Code. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby calls a public hearing to take place at 7.30 p.m. on September 18th, 2024 at the Birdsorf Fagan Police Court Facility at 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, to consider proposed local law 2024 entitled the Local Law Amending Chapter 250, Vehicles and Traffic of the Village of Austin Code, and be it further resolved that the proposed local law amends Section of 250-29, Overnight Parking, and 250-33, Permit Parking Fees, uh, by revising the list of classes of motor vehicles which will be issued overnight hardship park or municipal parking lot permits and be it further resolved that members of the public are invited to attend the public hearing in person at the above reference location and be it further resolved that members of the public requiring a reasonable accommodation to participate in the public hearing due to a person's disability shall shall notify the corporation counselor no later than seven days before the public hearing at Cajon at villageofaustin.org to afford the village significant time to provide a reasonable accommodation and be it further resolved that those members of the public who want to attend and participate in the public hearing remotely, access will be available through the Zoom platform and be it further resolved that comments regarding the proposed local law will be accepted by the board of trustees at BOT at villageofaustin.org. have a motion? So move. Second. Any comments from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Authorized purchase of plumbing equipment for three firehouse. Resolved that the village manager is authorized to approve the purchase of materials for three village owned firehouse referenced in quote number S100266767 and S. 100-264-588 and S-100-264-561 from W.A. Birdsall and Company, 18, 1819 West Elizabeth Avenue, Linden, New Jersey, 07036. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? This was all uh, discussed in the work session in detail for those that are following. All in favor? Aye. Aye. DPW, authorized to, um, authorization to advertise for bids. Contract DPW 2401, installation of new water transmission main, uh, White Tail Circle, Hawks Avenue, Route 9A, and the DOT entrance exit ramp, phase one. Resolve that subject to review of Corporation Council, the village clerk is authorized to advertise for bills for contract number DPW 24-01, Installation of a new water trans, uh, trans, uh, transmission main, Whitetail Circle, Hawks Avenue, uh, Route 9A, and the uh, New York State DOT entrance exit ramp. Phase one, such bids will be returnable to the village clerk. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? Sue? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Fire department removed from active roles. Um, resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin removes Barnabas is a, is is a door. door. Is a door? I almost got it. From the active roles of the Austin Fire Department, Washington Hook and Ladder Number Two. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments? Sue? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, any con continuing business of the board? I just, um, no. sorry, came to uh, my mind. Um, if you could, for I know the 9 11 meeting is going to be busy, but just either now or then, give us sort of a rundown where we are with the LED communication boards that we spoke about. Um, you know, when that's expected as well. So that would be also helpful. 
but I'll go there for you. Okay, and my my trusty partner, uh, Co Corporation Council Kahan, is going to handle the new business of the board. New business Res resolution A: Asbestos Abatement, 16 Croton Avenue. Resolved that upon review by Corporation Council, the village manager is authorized to sign the August 16, 2024 proposal from ACA Environmental Services, 1 Hay Street, Elmsford, New York, for asbestos abatement services at 16 Croton Avenue, offices for town receiver of taxes and assessor. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Does everybody on the board understand what this is? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I can do it. It's not, it's not a big oh, okay. deal. Uh, because it happened quickly, and I'm sure the manager will fill you in. There's work being done, just so we're putting new floors down through the building, fixing the building. I believe the clerk's office in area was one of the first, put new carpeting here. In that process, on the third floor, um, asbestos was found, and it was deemed that the remediation comes to a certain cost. It was not expected, but once they lifted up some of the tiles, um, that's what they found, and we have... Um, we have to fix it, and there will be a cost which the manager will be discussing or an estimate, right? For how much yeah. this is. Um, so, um, when they were while they were doing the floors, they discovered uh, asbestos tile. We had to get it tested. Um, the New York State mandates that in municipal buildings, asbestos must be abated professionally. So. In this case, we're not removing um, the tile. Um, it's not yet, um, but uh, it has to be uh, covered with um, plywood and contained before a new floor can be put down. So um, that work, um, we have an estimate. Um, we have an estimate, the lowest estimate was um, $29,000, um, oh, yeah, the 29835, I'm sorry. And um, we also, there will be a cost to also do um, air control air control monitoring with that, and that'll be about five to $7,000. Um, so it was a bit of an unfortunate find. Um, the good news is they've, we've already tested the second floor where we plan to put new flooring and no asbestos so this just this literally just happened so Stuart, i'm not sure you knew then you know it just happened so they're putting here otherwise we have to wait till september and wait and wait and wait because then no one it's so not that's that unusual that's in older happens. buildings to find this stuff oh, believe yeah, me so i know okay. quite well yeah. 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 it's just that <laughs> here the way to deal with it is mandated by new york state for municipal because in a private building you could cover it if you don't touch asbestos you could just cover it and it probably cost five grand here everything costs that's, more that's because there's a lot of rules right that, that's what we're doing right now we are covering so we're covering it but same. in in, in yeah. um for municipal buildings that has to be done by certified yeah. professionals yeah. 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 You know, staff. Yeah. in other words i asked why they didn't speak doing it and the answer was can't do it that way it's so what is the ultimate of the um, Alternative one price, which is not that much of a difference. What is that? Because I don't the see a the, the difference is that for the alt alternate number one that was rec that is on there, which is the twenty eight thousand dollars, that would require that everything be removed from the offices. That it would basically we'd have to get people to take everything out. They're going to be able to work around the desks and everything that's there. Obviously, no one can be there except for them, but. Alternate two would be a longer process because you'd physically have to take everything so, out. And, and I'm sorry, so and I'm sorry, because this is this proposal is not counting overtime. But now you, you just mentioned that no one could be there. So is this work going to be done on overtime or after hours? No, this this would be as far as I know, this is going to be done during work. Well, the I see no one can be in the tax assessor's office and no one could be in the receiver's office. They can go the the, the, the for example, supervisor's office would be open. Okay. Right. And and we have, you know, we've been, it's it's obviously never convenient when you can't work in your office, but we have been making accommodations. If we had to make accommodations for people to either work at home or work downstairs, I don't think necessarily that would incur overtime on those particular positions. No, no, that, no, 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 
but that Sorry, only, I, I don't I'm talking know. about the overtime of the proposal. No, itself. it's anticipated oh, in the day. Because, because it says on the proposal, it says right, not it overtime does. included. Right. This is excluded. Yeah, but so this, is, why, this yeah. is the scope based yeah. on the timing that they would okay. have to do the work. As long as yes. there's no additional no. money no. at this work. No, I'm sorry, I didn't understand, but fine. yes. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Thank you. So now everybody, is, so clearly a lot of this new business stuff, I think we now understand, we know this happens every once in a while. It's all last minute stuff because it would have been in the regular agenda if it weren't. So everything you're seeing here is not everything, but a lot of it has come up. And because the next meeting is 9-11, it behooves us to deal with things now. I actually didn't see some of this till I saw it in writing either. So um, just want to make sure we all know what we're saying yes to, okay? Or no, as the case may be. Okay, we're in the middle of a vote. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution B, uh, 2024 cabaret license for the 19th Hole Golf Simulator Corporation, 240 South Highland Avenue, Suite G, Austin, New York. Whereas pursuant to chapters 100 and 171 of the code of the village of Austin, the authorized representative of the business, the 19th hole golf simulator corporation, 240 South Highland Avenue, suite G Austin, New York, present an application to the village clerk as a licensing officer for a cabaret license. And whereas pursuant to sections 100-3 and 100-5 of the code, the village clerk caused an investigation into said application. And after receiving the results of the investigation from the finance department, the building department and police department, the application was referred to the board of trustees for final approval. And whereas the board of trustees reviewed the application at the August 21, 2024 meeting, regular meeting, now therefore be it resolved that pursuant to the code, the Board of Trustees hereby approves a cabaret license for 2024 for the 19th Hole Golf Simulator Corporation as follows, Sunday through Thursday, uh, 12 noon to 11 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 12 noon to midnight, the entertainment would be recorded music, and be it further resolved that pursuant to section 100-9 of the Village Code, the Board of Trustees may revoke or suspend any cabaret license issued under Chapter 100 where the license was obtained by fraud or false representation of fact or failing to comply with the provisions of Chapter 171 licenses. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, this application just recently came in. I should point out they did have a one-day license, which was granted by the manager. And during the course of that, the inspection was done. Uh, there were no reports by the police. Everything is clear from uh, from uh, uh, from the finance department. Uh, uh, the thinking was since the next meeting of this board to vote for a license would not be till the 18th of September. If we could get it in at this point, since everything else is uh, was clear, uh, it's a new uh, entity at the Arcadian. Uh, they had gone through planning board approval. They've got all their all their OKs. And uh, the note with regard to type of entertainment where it says recorded music. Their application had them having live music, it had them having a DJ, it had them having karaoke, but their method of operation, which they file with the State Liquor Authority, only said recorded music. So I have advised the applicant that until that gets changed, all they would be able to get would be recorded music. Also to point out, they are operating currently under a temporary State Liquor License, which expires, I think, September 22nd. Uh, so if for some reason that liquor license was not extended, they could then only serve uh, soft water. drinks, basically, and soda and water. They couldn't serve alcoholic beverage. But that has uh, nothing to do with us. That's the that has nothing to do with us. But I just want want the board. When are they up for re upping? Uh, well, basically, they just filed for a new license for a brand new license. So since they uh, since they're in that initial period, the board gives them a thirty day or basically in this case gave them a ninety day license. Then that license will expire. So. Before September 22, they should get their permanent license. And when, yeah. and when are they up for their cabaret with us? They're still cabaret. They would be at the end of this year. Right. So they're still. They don't get any. It's up again, like the first of the year. We right. Go through the whole yeah, thing. Okay. And they're aware of that, of course. Okay. And did anybody do a search to see what other businesses they own of similar ilk or not? Uh, or do we not do that? Not. We we don't do that. I can tell you that the business itself was incorporated. Very late last year, mm -hmm. uh, the principal is uh, Mr. Cardellini uh, from Cortland Manor, uh, but there was no indication of any any other issues or, or any anything else with regard to that. He is the sole uh, uh, officer from the corporation, according to the filing with the uh, clerk's office. All right, and it's in his name. So yep. Okay. Do we have any questions? Because you already answered some of mine with all the other stuff. So anybody? Questions? Comments? 
Or whoops. No, no, it goes up. Yep. I'll just say this is a new business. I haven't been there yet, but we should all go try it out. Yeah. Let's go play golf. <laughs> Anybody? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resol just so the board knows, resolution C, D, E, and F all relate to the CDBG grant. So there'll be a lot of similar language, except the description of particular projects will change. But first, CDBG uh, application Spring Street Walkability Improvement Phase 2, whereas the Village of Osning is a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium. And whereas as a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium, the Village of Osning is desirous of applying for community development block grants for the 2025-2027 fiscal year years. And whereas uh, the Village Board of Trustees has identified four projects eligible for CDBG funding that would meet the goal of the CDBG program. And whereas one of the four proposed projects identified by uh, the Village Board of Trustees is the Spring Street Walkability Improvement Project Phase 2, which will involve the installation of new sidewalks, curbs, and ADA-compliant ramps on both sides of Spring Street from the intersection with Lafayette Avenue to the entrance of Scarborough Manor. This phase of the project includes a small amount of tree work to deal with potentially hazardous trees. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the Village Manager to seek $200,000 in CDBG funding in order to fund the proposed Spring Street Walkability uh, Improvements Project Phase 2. And whereas the Spring Street Walkability Improvements Project Phase 2, the Village Board of Trustees pledges to match the funding amount requested with a contribution of $302,000. And whereas if the proposed Spring Street Walkability Improvements Project Phase 2 exceeds pro projected costs, the Village of Austin will be responsible for the balance uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees endorses this CDBG application and authorizes the village manager to sign and submit all required application materials. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Any comments from the board? Sue? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Resolution D, CDBG application, streetscaping and path improvements along James Street. Whereas the Village of Austin is a member of the Westchester County, Westchester Urban County Consortium, and whereas as a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium, the Village of Austin is desirous of applying for community development block grants for the 2025-2027 fiscal years. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees has identified four projects eligible for CDBG funding that would meet the goal of the CDBG program. And whereas one of the four proposed projects in identified by the Village Board of Trustees is the streetscaping and path improvements along James Street project, which will include replacing sidewalks along James Street, as many of them are in disrepair or narrow in some areas. Curbs will also be replaced, as many are also in disrepair, and ADA ramps will be installed for ADA compliance and enhanced accessibility in the area. The footpath will be improved to become an official connection between the two streets that pedestrians can safely access. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the Village Manager to seek $200,000 in CDBG funding in order to fund the proposed streetscaping and path improvements along James Street project. And whereas for the streetscaping and path improvements along James Street project, the Village Board of Trustees pledges to match the funding amount requested with a contribution of $484,900. And whereas if the proposed streetscaping and path improvements along James Street project exceeds projected costs, the Village of Austin will be responsible for the balance. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Village Board of Trustees endorses the CDBG application and authorizes the Village Manager to sign and submit all required application materials. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? Stuart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution E, CDBG application, Ellis Place Streetscaping. Whereas the Village of Austin is a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium, and whereas as a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium, the Village of Austin is desirous of applying for community development block grants for the 2025-2027 fiscal years. And whereas the Village Board of Trust, whereas uh, the Village Board of Trustees has identified four projects eligible for CDBG funding that would meet the goal of the CDBG program. 
And whereas one of the four proposed projects identified by the Village Board of Trustees is the Ellis Place streetscaping project, which will include replacing sidewalks along Ellis Place, as many of them are in disrepair or narrow in some areas. Curbs will also be replaced as many are also in disrepair and ADA ramps will be installed for ADA compliance and enhanced accessibility in the area. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the village manager to seek $200,000 in CDBG funding in order to fund the proposed Ellis Place streetscaping project. And whereas for the Ellis Place streetscaping project, the Village Board of Trustees pledges to match the funding amount requested with a contribution of $299,200. And whereas if the proposed Ellis Place streetscaping project exceeds projected costs, the Village of Austin will be responsible for the balance. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Village Board of Trustees endorses this CDBG application and authorizes the Village Manager to sign and submit all required application materials. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Any comments from the board? I'm um, just sorry. Go ahead, Dana. Oh. Hi. Uh, full disclosure, I live in Alice Place. Okay, so um, I've talked to other people who live on the street about this one primary concern. And I recall this being either in the presentation about these projects that we had a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a reference to tree preservation. The main concern people have is that when new sidewalks go in, trees often come out. That So that I don't know if we can get, I'm, I don't know, I just remember that language being used, but it's not in the, it's not in here. So, but can we say tree preservation is a um so so there the answer is yes and no so there is um a concern about trees from the county but you know and plantings the reality is though most of the sidewalk work that's really challenging on ellis place is because of trees and unfortunately they're not the appropriate trees to be planted where they are so while I can't determine definitively what would need to be removed or what wouldn't, um, the the reality is that trees that cause the sidewalks to buckle are causing the problem that we need to crack because the bigger issue is the walkability, accessibility, particularly for people with mobility issues or wheelchairs or strollers. So um, I think that the the right answer, and we can get a more technical answer from the county, is that uh, we want to make sure that um, we preserve green space, but if there was a need to take down trees because they really weren't the appropriate trees that should have been planted there in the first place many years ago, that we would consider other types of planting, which has been done in other areas of the village. So um, that is a concern in some of the areas, but I will tell you, those are the areas where we have the most severe buckling around those trees. So it's something we're going to have to We'll take it on a tree by tree basis. We'll take it on a on a tree by tree basis, but there is um, you know, where there has to be the removal of trees, we'll try to compensate that with other um more appropriate plantings that won't disturb walkability in the long run. Okay. The only other option is to pull this out, this project out. No, I don't think that's not good idea. I think the project's necessary. It's just, just a concern I've heard from the president. No, I hear the concern. It's, the main it's one. one of those. I remember what happened on Linden, so. Yeah, look, I mean, I think, you know. <laughs> that was the first time I marched in and said, what happened? I think that was my, my first introduction to public service, but um, yeah. you know, Ellis Place is known for its trees. It always has been. If you look at the old postcard, it was lined with trees. Um, and it's I know, I mean, I know where the bad spots are, and there's really just a couple of very mature and old trees that I think are the primary concern. Um, but uh, that's just a big concern that people, everybody said that to me. Mm -hmm. I spoke with about it. So. You might have to, on this project, actually have an arborist, because if you leave it to people who don't understand trees, they're all going to come. No, we would like an arborist. That'd be great. The county has a policy, you know, on, on how they do this and, and uh, we would be working with arborists. And, you know, I think the challenge is that a lot of these trees, when they were planted originally, you know, people forget how big trees go, grow. And, um, you know, I, I don't think the, the um, idea is to uh, disrupt the, um, 
the you know nobody wants to take down beautiful trees or anything else so it would be done based on um you know prioritizing safety and walkability on the sidewalk which you know is 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 a problem so i i think that uh by the time we get to this, um, and we'll continue with conversations with the county, but I know working on the other streetscaping projects we had with them, there is a great concern about maintaining green space, but again, looking at things that will more appropriately uh, align a sidewalk in a way that doesn't cause um, the, the challenges that roots do. Now I spoke this out extensively, walking up and down the street. And there are, um, I think some trees may be more expendable than others. There are some really, a couple of two to three bad cases of buckling due to tree roots, but there's also a lot of, a lot of it is the old bluestone, historic bluestone sidewalks are also a mess. Believe me, I watch every day people trying to push their strollers along these sidewalks. Uh, so I, I fully understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we have an awful lot, an increasing amount of foot traffic on Alice Place, which is great, you know, because I think our streets should be walked on. We have a very, very walk uh, increasing between the high school, St. Anne's, um, people walking uh, to families biking, uh, people walking to go around the track. At the, I mean, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, bus stops for the little kids. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I get the need for this, um, but just wanted to put that out there. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution F, CDBG application, William Street Streetscaping. Whereas the village of Osney is a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium, and whereas as a member of the Westchester Urban County Consortium, the village of Osney is desirous of applying for community development block grants for the 2025-2027 fiscal years. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees has identified four projects eligible for CDBG funding that would meet the goal of the CDBG program. And whereas one of the four proposed projects identified by the Village Board of Trustees is the William Street streetscaping project, which will include replacing sidewalks along William Street, as many of them are in disrepair or narrow in some areas. Curbs will also be replaced as many are also in disrepair and ADA ramps will be installed for ADA compliance and enhanced accessibility in the area. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the village manager to seek $200,000 in CDBG funding in order to fund the proposed William Street streets, streetscaping project specified above. And whereas for the William Street streetscaping project, the Village Board of Trustees pledges to match the funding amount requested with a contribution of $259,000. And whereas if the proposed William Street streetscaping project exceeds projected costs, the Village of Austin will be responsible for the balance. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Village Board of Trustees endorses this CDBG application and authorizes the Village Manager to sign and submit all required application materials. Do I have a motion? So move. Any comments from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 840, 841. So this concludes our meeting for today. There was a lot on the agenda, but since we've been discussing this for months, um, the board was pretty well versed in all of the different pieces of legislation in front of us. I thank everyone for being here again. Next meeting, September 11th, please also be on the lookout for events on Labor Day and 9-11 events that are historically done in our community. And have a great evening. Okay.